My name is Neve McCann and the title of the exhibition is called La Perruque, which um, is French for the wig and really it's titled that way because for me that encompasses a few different thoughts and ideas as well as pieces within the work. Um, firstly, La Perruque, the wig, uh, alludes to the De Soto idea of slipping kind of tricky tactics into cultural moments and kind of maybe looking at agency from within a moment and from within structures. Um, and I'm very interested in that as a thing and an idea and a way of making. Um, being an artist is quite a complicated thing. We're both you know, compromised by the fact that we're making whimsical objects and still trying to have cultural agency or kind of questioning what it is we're doing and what it is we can change or think about. So I think that idea of the wig is one way of saying maybe I can slip around things and objects and question through these methods. And then secondly, uh, the person who is very central to these works is Hans Polzig, the German architect, kind of turn of the centuries in 1900s to 2000s. Um, and he was very seminal in terms of the structures and the design and the thinking and very involved in with people pre-Bauhaus and expressionistic and designed specifically the IG Farben building. And yet he's almost kind of this character who's to the edge of the photograph and central to us. So I think for me, he's somebody who very much encompasses that idea of Le Perruque or kind of having agency whilst being able to be fluid across structures and societies and still be hugely influential. I think of myself really largely as a landscape artist. Um, and I know that's a very, very broad term and I guess it's deliberately broad because I think I look at the landscape around us and really by that I mean the constructed landscape, the stuff we make, the stuff we consume, but how that also constructs our understanding of the world. So it's a circular narrative whereby we make things, it makes us and we go around and I consider that as landscape. Um, and I look at those cultural tropes through things. I'm very much still a maker. I make sculptural objects, paintings, drawings, um, and create situations that take many landscapes and recreate them to, I guess, push around those, those specific details I'm looking at. In terms of this exhibition, I return to an essay by Jean Fisher, which is Tricky Tactics, and she does talk about the idea of the wig or the um, person who adopts the carnivalesque to create agency. And if anything, that's probably a good example of something that I will return to again over the years. Many of the artists that she would cite within that, again, I find super interesting. Um, contemporaneously, Inki Shonabari, um, Francis Elise, I find super interesting. There are a number of pieces. One is a video film work called The Protest Song. It's a black and white uh, piece with two, well, three characters, two male characters and a piece of music as the third joining character between those two figures. Uh, the piece of music is the second movement of the Schumann Quintet and it's very beautifully sang by the tenor Sean Kennedy. And it was shot on the hill up to Stormont Castle, which I feel adds a lot of um, uh, Belfast landscape to us and I think that that idea bringing the history of the specifics into us I very much like about the piece um, and it brings together a number of different elements to create one character the one fictional real uh, cultural moment that we create to try and again understand what's going on and it should be a very emotional piece in a way where it's contained within a walk to oneself and around oneself. That, I guess, is the best way I could describe it. Um, and it specifically also re references Hans Polzig as the fictional character in Black Cat. So it brings together the two sides of his practice and work. Um, there is a large wall drawing piece 
which is a coloured imagining of a black and white still from De Gollum, how he came into the world. Film that Paul Wegner directed and produced, and Hans Polzig created the scenography for it. So basically, built a city in real life when they filmed this uh, masterpiece around us. And the, the landscape, the created landscape, was really about the psychological melodrama contained within the story. So the physical reflected the, the played out reality and the played out fiction within us. So I'm kind of reimagining that space and putting it into a colour format on 2D, obviously. Um, we have a number of Polzig original drawings um, also shown on this work and around the gallery. They look fantastic. Um, drawings of the IG Farben design, as well as some design works or design drawings for the Showspiel House, which was a beautiful building which no longer exists, but it was for the design for Max Reinhardt. Um, and the colour of the wall drawing takes a lot of those notes from those drawings, and there's a certain kind of gothic expressionistic nature again, I tried to offset with his work within this strange created landscape. Um, there is a large parachute which inflates and deflates on a kind of a cycle of rotation in the tall gallery space. And for me that I kind of should or does exist in a number of different ways. It's kind of a sculptural object that almost needs no more explanation other than this poetry of cyclical motion. Um, and also it obviously comes from the same era as the, the IG Farben building, the Polzig um, creation of works and how these films came at a certain time in that's literally kind of 1948 parachute. Um, and this inflation, deflation, slight exhalation of kind of these multiple narratives should kind of sit with, on that or in that. Um, and then finally, there is a video piece called The Building, and it is a video piece with over three monitors, and it specifically kind of appropriates images or snippets from the sources from the Gollum, film The Gollum, from The Black Cat, the 1934 film The Black Cat, and some images I took of the IG Farben building. I would say it's almost like a documentary style description of certain facts about that building overlaid on top of a created like oral landscape. Uh, and I think of that piece a bit like a drawing or a painting. Was it to allow multiple elements to exist in the same space and to allow the silences and the blacks and the edges to coexist with the other images and to have that unfold as a pseudo documentary style thing that's actually not all fact but can be taken as fact because there's a certain truth held within all those moments and it should kind of sit between the other works. The multiple narratives and threads and disparate influences from the social to the political to the ge geographic to the historical kind of should sit together within all those pieces. Uh, I think that I aim to have them to come together via the materiality of the things themselves. So the protest song is essentially also about love and hate and beauty and emotion and the specific geography of Belfast and Storm and Castle and how the structures contained within that building have great meaning and implied influence and yet you take them aside from that, they're amoral objects. So the materiality of the thing should hold the viewer in the space to just be able to view us as a, an experience, but also maybe pick up those threads. Uh, each work does work individually, but I think they sit together to kind of draw lines between all those multiple places. And in many ways, though, I like, again, the visual tricky tactics of not spelling something out within the object or within the narrative. I think once they're said out loud, almost described like a 1948 parachute, it does describe what it is, where it's coming from, what it is, and what, where I'm aiming at. You know, I think the, the articulated narratives are contained within the objects.